SAC 106A problem number four looks like an energy accounting problem to me. Um, we're going to have to use numerical methods to find out how fast this object is moving at the last instant before it uh, hits the, the ground, so after it's traveled a distance of uh, 35 um, meters from its uh, release point. And then uh, I'll say, you can think of it as the uh, energy that got lost by the object. That, that is the mechanical energy that it originally had that it, it no longer has. That's the energy that gets uh, transferred slash transformed. So uh, it's just going to be the uh, energy that we started with. I call it uh, E initial and then minus the final energy. And uh, the uh, percentage that we're looking for, I call it uh, percent energy transferred. It's just going to be the energy transferred divided by the initial energy, EI, times 100 percent. So uh, Again, it's a, an energy accounting problem, and our, our big deal is to find out how fast it's moving at the end so we can figure out what the uh, the final energy is. And to get that, I'm going to define a coordinate system in which the variable x is measured positive downward from x is equal to zero. So uh, in our before picture, we got an object moving with a speed of 7.77 meters per second. Call that V0. Now I've been going with I and F, so I'll call it VI. And we're up at uh, x is equal to zero. And in the after picture, got an object moving at some higher speed, uh, vf, which is unknown to start with. And it's at a distance uh, downward x is equal to. 35 meters. So we're at ground level. Uh, this is the ground. My origin I place up there at uh, x is equal to zero is 35 meters above the ground. And uh, now we got to find out what this VF is. The speed that the object has when it's 35 meters below its launch point. So we're, I'm going to use essentially definition of velocity. We'll get started. Uh, I'm going to use a time step. I call it uh, delta t. And just, uh, I'll probably change this once I uh, put it into a spreadsheet, but I'll choose some uh, a hundredth of a second, some small time interval, and we'll see how that goes. Then I'll create a bunch of columns, and the idea is uh, just to, to build up the position based on the definition of velocity and acceleration. So I'm going to have uh, some number n, an index, just an integer. Starts out at zero. And later on, one, two, etc. And then uh, the time, my stopwatch reading, is just going to be n times delta t, where the delta t is some fixed value, and uh, it'll just copy on down. So the first one will be time zero, then a hundredth of a second, two hundredth of a second for the case where uh, delta t is actually that. Then I'll go with the uh, position. 
x is um, at times 0. I'm calling that 0. And uh, I think I'll finish off this first line first. The v, so when uh, for the n that we're working on, we'll call that sub n, the v for that n um, at times 0, it was given as 7.77 meters per second. And then the acceleration for n is given by this formula up here. So uh, the 9.8 minus 0 0.0225 reciprocal meters times v squared. So I, I think I'll, uh, I'll define an a sub g uh, 9.80 meters per second squared. And then uh, the acceleration is a sub g. So that's the magnitude of the acceleration. The direction is downward, so it'll be positive for uh, my positive downward x uh, coordinate system. So I got a sub g and then minus, and it was 0 0.0225. I could put that next line, 0 0.0225 meters to the minus 1 times v squared, where v is whatever I've got over here. Let's see if that, if I copy that right, yeah, 0 0.0225. Okay, uh, let's start working on the next line. The uh, next x will be the x just above it. So this will be, uh, I'll call this x sub n minus 1 plus the acceleration that's good from the time interval from 0 to 1. I actually want the acceleration in the middle of the time interval. Um, so I'm going to have to go for uh, half time intervals. And I'll just add them onto the same row. but. Uh, to get the acceleration at the half time interval, I'm going to need the velocity at the half time interval. So I'll, I'll start with that. Um, the uh, velocity, I'll call it n plus a half, is going to be, for this case, it'll be the original velocity. I think for this first one, this very first entry is going to be a little bit different than the others. What I'll do is use a sub 0 for that first uh, half of a time interval. Uh, this is really the, uh, I, I, uh, to, be, to do the best I, I could, I'd want it at the, the quarter of the time interval, the acceleration, in order to get the velocity at the half time interval. So I make a more of an approximation than I do. In most cases, I use the acceleration at the beginning of the time interval, just for this first entry. So it'll be. Uh, v sub n, which is v0 in this case. I think I'll go ahead and write that down, but it's, it's this guy right here. Plus, and then I'll use a sub 0, that's this guy, times delta t over 2 to get the velocity at the half time interval. So that would be at, uh, this is a hundredth of a second, so five thousandths of a second. And then a at n plus a half. I think it's going to be pretty easy. I'll, I'll just uh, take the, the formula that I got for a, a sub g, and then it is minus. I want to check on that. Yeah, minus 0 0.0225. Meters to the minus 1 v squared. Uh, in this one, I was using v0, uh, which I'll just call vn. 
this one right over here, and here I'm using n plus a half. So I'm using the velocity that's going to be in this slot. Okay, um, let's see uh, if we can proceed now. So we use the plus vn plus a half times delta t. The full delta t from 0 to uh, 1. n is equal to 0 to n is equal to 1. So with delta t being 0.01 seconds, we're talking from time 0 to a hundredth of a second. Uh, this was a, a half of that uh, time interval because I wanted to get the velocity at a half. Okay, then the velocity at n, okay, it'll be vn minus 1, which would be this value, plus the acceleration that's good from time 0 to time 1, and my best estimate for that is the one that's valid at the, the middle of that time interval, and that's the one I got over here. So I'll say plus a n plus 1 half times delta t. And then the acceleration, it'll just be this formula, where I'll be using this velocity. Uh, Vn plus a half, I'll take this. This is going to be a little bit different, so I'll take this old one. Uh, so I'll call this uh, V of n minus a half. So for instance, n is equal to 1. So n plus a half, which uh, corresponds to this guy, is 1.5. And then uh, n minus a half, where this is 1, that would be the 0 0.5. So it's it would be this guy right here. So I want this one plus the acceleration during the time interval that goes from the uh, n minus a half up to n plus a half from here to here. And the acceleration that's in the middle of that time interval would be this one right here, the a sub n. So when this is 0 0.5, 1.5, this is 1. That's the one I want. A sub n times delta t. That looks good. And then uh, this one, I'll just uh, use the same formula as I have above it, but I'll use, be using this velocity instead of this one as I was up here. OK, beyond that, uh, we just have to copy these down ad nauseum. So this will uh, you know, go on and on until uh, we'll take it as high as we need to to make it so that uh, x sub n is 35 meters. So I'm going to call this the end of part one. What I want to do is uh, do part two on